Welcome to episode six of the uh, motor build and the uh, battery pack build. I'm gonna go on holiday for two weeks, so it's gonna be a bit of a gap. So I thought I'd just show you what I've done since the last video. And on this video, I'm gonna focus on these feet, these rubber mounts, anti-vibration feet. Um, you don't have to buy them whole, they're quite expensive. So you can buy the parts, which is far cheaper. So a little bit of that. Uh, and also I'm gonna see if I can put these on. And also a big thank you to uh, Kosaki and Lagitaya, who kindly pointed out in the comments that my connection idea here is incorrect. So a little bit about that as well. So let's do it. So with the kind feedback, um, I have now reconnected this because previously I mentioned that this was plus and minus, which is completely incorrect. That is basically minus battery. So this last point at the back here will connect to the minus battery. And this is minus power. So any power I want to draw from this battery pack will come in from here. And it will just go through this, this minus points into the battery and then around again. And then the plus will go straight out from the battery. So I've reconnected all of this so it now works better. So apologies for making assumptions and not reading up on this um, before I actually uh, mention it on on internet. But uh, anyway, it should now be uh, be correct. So these will be uh, one will be sitting in the bottom corner here. Go straight through. Uh, down there and one will be sitting up here and that will then connect the the battery miners at the rear here so that comes up to there so instead of buying these for you know 50 60 dollars or 40 50 pounds each sometimes more you can actually just buy the the rubber foot casing and then you can buy the uh, steel rod separately and all your nuts and spaces. Uh, and by doing so, um, you probably spend $15 uh, roughly on these rather than 60, 70 each. So I'll put a link in the uh, description of how you can uh, build these yourself far cheaper than uh, buying them off the shelf. Okay, so I'm gonna mount these feet on to each of these points uh, but i thought we'll do that in hyperlapse uh, because i have a feeling that it's going to be a bit messy so i haven't properly tightened the feet up the anti-vibration feet up but that gives you an idea of the profile of the setup with the actual feet on uh, and a little bit about the actual nuts and rods that I bought. So there is a, uh, an, a nut on the inside here that is tightened with this uh, lock nut. Then there's another lock nut and a flange nut, I think they're called, and an oversized spacer because I wanted more support on the underneath here. And then a, another flange nut on the top and a little plastic spacer there, which I am going to not replace, but I'm gonna put one of the big spaces underneath that plastic spacer. So it's just a little bit to, to tighten against. So I'm gonna get another five of these big, big spacers, and or not another four and put them on the top as well here. I should still have plenty of, of uh, meat left to, to move up and down and also sideways. So this is the side profile. So a question. Do you need anti-vibration feet for electrical motors or were they designed for the conventional combustion engine that has a, a kind of a vibration to it? I don't know. Maybe it's overkill. Maybe you don't need a uh, anti-vibration feet on, on one of those motors. So uh, any any uh, ideas on around that or any suggestions or comments, feel free to, uh, to leave. So this is a last batch of uh, four thumb screws and four pairs of um, 
isolation connectors but these times I'm going to drill an M8 hole straight through and then use these uh, copper rods uh, so that I can connect the rear and the front of the plate together to complete the, uh, the 14S. Uh, there's also a couple of new parts in there <clears throat> which are these half circles, these little rods you put, put two of those together you then get a little rod like this and is to be able to replace, or well not replace, to add additional supports to the battery pack as you can see you have these little holes here so this is the scooter battery pack that I use and these are the extra support rods that slot in and I can epoxy those and that should make the whole pack a little bit more rigid if I put another four or five of those on each pack. The workshop is getting a little bit messy. This is a tube bender that I'm putting together for the building of the actual boat that the motor is going into that's happening in parallel. So I will uh, probably start posting a uh, some information about the boat build as well. So I will create a separate playlist for that so you can follow the boat build from uh, start to finish. And I will also do a, uh, a penny tracking uh, on each of the parts that I build to give you an idea of uh, how much it cost, some tool stuff I had to buy, some courses I've had to take. Uh, if you ever think of building your own boat, it could come in handy. Uh, when you do your own calculations. I have run out of time, so I won't be able to mount these today. Um, so that will be a job for when I come back from my annual leave. So we'll leave those for now. Thank you for watching episode six. Apologies if it was a bit rushed. Uh, as I said, I'm going on, on annual leave, uh, but at least you know where we're at. Um, if this was the first time you saw uh, this channel and you want to see it from the beginning, then there will be an episode up here, the first episode. Uh, if you have any concerns, comments or questions, leave them in the comments. And if you would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.